Hello and welcome to farmfeltandglass.com. Today we're going to do a beginner's project with needle felting. So um, first I'm going to cover a bit on um, the tools and supplies that you will use as a needle felter. So the first thing we're going to talk about is your needle felting pad and we're also going to discuss the different types of needles as well as different types of fibers that you can use or um, wools that you can use in your felting projects. So the felting pad um, just helps you from breaking your needle and um, also from uh, stabbing yourself. Um, you can get a cushion like this. Most uh, felting kits will come with one of these if you buy a complete kit. Um, they work just fine. Um, you can also kind of make your own felting pad just by um, sewing some burlap together. Uh, making like a little uh, pouch with the burlap and filling it with rice. This works great. Um, and then whenever your bag kind of um, gets a little bit, little bit too used and abused, you can just cut yourself from yardage another piece of burlap and lay it on top um, and just use some um, quilting clips to um, put it down on the, on the top of the other layers. So you can always start with a fresh layer every time you have a new project, which is really nice. Um, but either one works just fine. It just depends on your preference. So let's talk about needles. So there's several different types of needles that you can use. Um, there is the uh, triangle needle, which is the most common. So triangle meaning it has three sides to it and um, spiral or uh, notches cut out of uh, each one of those sides. The spiral needle actually kind of twists, kind of like a corkscrew. Um, it's a very aggressive felter. Um, it's actually my preferred felting tool unless I'm using um, or making something with an armature or metal inside um, or pipe cleaners, stuff like that, um, which is kind of a more advanced felting. Um, but I love the spiral needle. And that's probably what I'm going to use most of today um, in the demonstration or tutorial. So you can also, the star needle um, has just an extra side. So it's got four sides instead of three. So it actually will felt a little bit more aggressive than just the triangle needle. But those are the um, three needles that we use the most of in my um, tutorials here. Um, they also come in different gauges as well. So you can go all the way from a uh, 36 to a uh, 42 gauge needle, um, I think even 46. Uh, the gauge um, is going to indicate how um, thin or thick your needle is. So the higher the gauge, just like in wire, the, th the thinner the needle is going to be. So, of course, the more thin your needle is, the more delicate um, you're going to have to work with it because it could break easier. But that also allows you to have less of a punch mark and do more delicate work with the uh, thinner, um, higher gauge needles. So now let's talk about the different types of wools um, or fiber that you can use for needle felting. So um, the first one is very common um, for, for wet felters to use, and that is a comb top merino wool. It's delightful to, to wet felt with. It's uh, felt um, very fast um, with wet felting. My, my, not my preference at all for needle felting. It's a very long staple to it. Uh, very difficult sometimes to pull apart um, when you just want a, a small amount. Um, and it also, just because it is so smooth, um, it really shows your punch marks um, and it's just uh, difficult to sometimes get detail with it because of that. So not my preference. It's a beautiful fiber, but not my preference for needle felting. Um, sometimes I do use alpaca fiber. We are an alpaca farm, so um, I try to use it whenever I can. Um, I prefer the shorter staple length, um, if I can um, get that to use. Um, it's very soft. Um, alpaca fiber is fuzzy. It's kind of got that cashmere angora um, texture to it. So um, it's, it's really nice for if you're wanting to make something fuzzy, like say you're wanting to make a chipmunk and you want the, the um, fur to look like fur. So using something like alpaca actually is an advantage in that case. Um, today, um, for the um, uh, little project we're going to work on, we're going to use um, Coredale um, fiber and it's very short staple length. They sometimes will refer to it as a sliver, Coredale sliver. 
Um, it's really my favorite to needle felt. It felt so quickly. Um, it's very easy to manipulate and to um, uh, make detail work with. If you're a beginner felter, um, I kind of recommend starting off with purchasing a kit to start with because it will come with everything that you need. So if you do it and you decide, oh, I'm not sure this is for me, you haven't invested in a lot of uh, fiber and um, tools and stuff. Not that there's a lot of tools involved with um, needle felting as we uh, discussed earlier, but um, the fiber can get quite expensive if you're trying to buy every color you know you want. So. Um, you can get little kits like this, um, and they usually have just little small amounts of the fiber that you need, so you're not purchasing a whole bunch of fiber, um, and it will get you through the, the project that you're making. So um, really economical way to um, get started with uh, needle felting. Um, some of the needle felting kits will actually come with everything included, not just the fiber. So it will come with the sponge, um, usually sometimes a needle holder, and different types of needles that you will need. So really, you, you're you know, covering everything that you need. You can just pull it out of the box and get started, which is really nice. A few more things that you might need um, for your uh, needle felting um, endeavors. Just handy stuff. You don't actually need it. Um, you can get away without it, but it's kind of handy to have. Um, is a ruler, so you can just use a, you know, ruler like this. Um, I actually like to draw um, the ruler on my work surface. So if you're just working on a plastic table or whatever, maybe you'll just, you know, draw the numbers on there. And that's just real handy, um, you know, to pull out what amount of fiber that you need for each project. Um, you know, I like to have it written on here because then when I know where it is, so it's not like I'm, you know, wrapping paper where you're always losing your scissors and tape and stuff like that. It's right here. I can just clear it off and I'm good to go. Um, another thing you might need is scissors. And I like to use this sponge. Um, it's a wet or damp sponge. And um, sometimes you'll, you'll want moist fiber for, for different detail work. So it's nice to have a little handy sponge here.